Hi, in this tutorial we're going to take a quick look at how to create a board game in Microsoft Word. It's really a very simple process using the basic tools available to you, but it can be a nice activity for students. It gives them something different to do, something a little creative, and you can focus this on the content uh, that you wish to either review or learn, and either you can make the game and play it with the class, or as a project, if you have a little more time, students can make make a game themselves, and that can that can be a good experience. So let's get started. First, I'd like to go to View and One Page, so I can see the entire page on the screen. You can see that I've got about six and a half inches of usable space, and in this direction, it looks more like nine. This is an 8 by 11 and a half, and so the space that can't be used is due to the margins, and we can adjust this if we'd like. So you go to Page Layout, Margins, Custom Margins, and I could say reduce this to 0.5 all the way around. Okay, so top, bottom, left, and right margins are now 0.5. You get a little more space. Now, let me insert a table, and what I'd really like to do is I'd like to calculate how much space I have and how big I'd like the boxes to be. Um, you may also consider how many columns you have, because that can make a difference in your game, but we'll look at that in a minute. So I'm looking at uh, here about seven and a half usable inches up at the top. So I'm just going to make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I will later I will lose that extra half inch. So I've got my row. You might want to zoom in a little bit on that. So let's say view page width. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the cells, right click and go to table properties, and click on the column tab. Now this has a preferred width. So I'm just simply going to set that to one inch for each column. And if you notice, if I jump from column to column, because I had pre-selected them all, they'll all be set to the same. So now they've got one inch each. If I go back to table properties, if I'm worried that it seems a little skewed to the left now, if I come to the table, I can just center the entire table here. And that'll take care of that. That um, that'll take care of that misalignment. Now, third time, table properties, and you could do this in one fell swoop if you knew exactly what you wanted to do to start with. Since I've got a width of one, I might like these boxes to be square. So I'm going to specify an, a height of one inch, and this is set to at least. But if I want to lock it in, I can change that to exactly. Now when I say OK, I've got one by one boxes. Let me come back to one page view. OK, now if I click in the last cell and hit the tab key, it's going to automatically generate additional rows with the same properties. So the properties of the new rows are based on the properties of whatever row I'm in when I create the new row. Now you can see I have a little space at the bottom of the page. But if I go to add another row, it goes to the next page. So I don't have quite enough. Let me undo that. And I'm not centered from top to bottom. If I wanted to do that, clicking in the very first space of the very first cell and hitting Enter will cause a blank line to be placed above the table. So it's a good way to get a little spacing above the table. And you can then adjust that in a variety of ways. I could either just up the size of it until I felt it was centered. Note also that when you're using font size in Word, you don't have to use the uh, pre-described sizes. You can type in something. So instead of 16 or 18, I'm going to put in 17. And I can even put in 17.5. Now, if I were to put in 17.6 or 17.7, you notice it's not a valid number. Okay, so it will take half sizes on your font, but nothing smaller than that. Okay, now here's my game board. 
If I wanted to make this something like a monopoly board, I'd simply want to get rid of the grid in the center. Now the simplest way to do that, honestly, is to select everything, go to the border control here under paragraph, and say no border. Now I can select the top row and put on all borders. There we go. We've got a basic Monopoly game. Okay, and I'll put um, a couple of things in here that are not particularly uh, Monopoly-like just to show you some features. Now, I've typed text in some of these boxes. I probably would want to change the font size. You know, I could change the font if I wanted. I can center them in there. And if I want to space them inward, if I want to space them top to bottom, I can simply go back to my page layout, and you see there's some spacing I can add before or after, and I want to use it before. And there you go. Again, I don't have to accept the increments that it provides. I can just type in something myself until I get what I want. Of course, there's font color, etc. that's available. Now, once I get what I want, I don't need to necessarily do that to each of these squares. What I can do is I can just click on the text, click my Format Painter, and then select Additional Text, and that should carry all the formatting across. If I have multiples to do, I can double-click the Format Painter. Sorry, I wasn't selected on the right thing when I created it, so here you go. Double click. Now, you'll notice that in this particular case, or cases, perhaps my, um, my formatting needs to be a little different because they're on multiple lines. This is on three lines, this is on two. I probably don't want to change the size of the font. I want that pretty consistent, but there's some other things I can change. So the first thing I'll need to do is, you'll notice I still have the paintbrush. If you've double-clicked it, you're going to need to hit Escape to get out of that so it doesn't continue to apply that format. In this case, I'm going to make this one centered. Um, I'll put on a different amount. And here you can see it's picked up a little bit. I may have to, in this case, Reduce the font a little bit to get it to move or fit into my space. One other thing you can do with these particular blocks, if, if your game design uh, requires some shading, you simply use click in the cell, pick the shading color, there you go, so you can design it that way. If I wanted some, you know, a spot in here to, say, place some cards or something, I can use other features, like simply a top border and then a, um, where are we, bottom border, then click in one cell. And I can add a left and a right. So you get the idea. This is where I might put my playing cards if I wanted to make them. Okay, now your design does not have to follow the square monopoly design. Uh, if I wanted to, I could let me zero this part out. Notice this is why I started with everything blank. Because if I do that now, I'm just going to have to fix these up. Not a big deal. But your game could be more of a winding game, the game of life or something like that. Uh, 
Uh, let's get rid of the shading on that one. There we go. So you can see I can make I can make a different type of game. Okay, those are the basics. The only other thing that you can do if you'd like is that you can of course insert pictures into these cells. It would be a good idea to get one that's fairly small or precise that'll save you a little bit of time. But if not, I can insert a larger picture in here. I'm simply going to have to click on it then and drag that size down. Or better yet, I can click on it and you see your sizes are up here so I can just simply um, say 0.2 inches by 0.2 inches that really was much too small so let's make it uh, one well I know how big my space is it's one by one so let's make it one by one See what happens. See, it fits right in there. It actually is, is just slightly large. Also notice that although I typed in one by one, it's resizing them um, proportionally. So because my picture isn't square. So I'm going to go to the larger size here and maybe I'll make it a little smaller, 0 0.9. There you go. You can do your spacing in the same way. Put a page layout on there and add a couple of points of spacing to push it down or we'll simply use the button it looks like something in between maybe a, a nine okay so those are the basics i'm sure you can um, figure out the rest a little bit by playing it and um, that's how you would make a board game nice activity for students to do as well